make a salt and water, not necessarily table salt, right? <laughs> Acids and bases react with one another to make water and a salt. Uh, it's an, a salt is just a word for an ionic compound. They conduct electricity. If the aqueous solutions conduct electricity, that's because both acids and bases, when you dissolve them in water, make ions. Uh huh. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, acids react with metals to make hydrogen gas. Is that in here? Sour taste. Acid base indicators. Yeah. Acids react with active metals like zinc and magnesium and things like that to make hydrogen gas. Okay. Good. Um, I wanted to talk about those because those kinds of questions, you, you may see a question on the STAR exam about the general properties of acids and bases. Okay, good. Uh, anything else that you ran into besides the electrolytes thing that you had questions about? It's just from memory. I know, I collected. Okay. Good. Did I forget? Did I give you a little exercise in naming acids? Did I do that? Okay. You were okay with that? It's all about the conjugate base, isn't it? If the conjugate base is bromide, the acid is hydrobromic. If the conjugate base is sulfite, then the acid is sulfurous acid. Ites make uses, ix mates make eights, right? If the, if the name of the conjugate base ends with an ite, then it's the, the acid is an us. Nitrite ion becomes nitrous acid. Sulfite ion becomes sulfurous acid. If it ends with an eight, then the acid name ends with an ick. Phosphate ion is phosphoric acid. The uh, nitrate ion is nitric acid. If the, if the name of the ion, name of the conjugate base, ends with an ide, then we have the hydro x, right? I really like the mnemonic devices, so I ate something. It was icky. Right? I use chus. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. Okay. <laughs> If you don't mind, I, I won't be using that in the future. Okay. I don't know. If I can say aqua blue, I guess I can say anything. Okay. Good. Now, to go back to what we were talking about yesterday, we had three acid-base theories. So do we have three different definitions for an acid? Really? Just two, huh? Because Arrhenius acids and Bronsted-Lowry acids are the same things, aren't they? Okay. And we have really only two definitions for bases, don't we? Right? Except that we really have three definitions for a base. What's a base under an, the Arrhenius acid base theory? Compound that contains hydroxide ion for Bronsted-Lowry. Proton acceptor or taker or receiver for Lewis base? Provider of electron pair. Electron pair donor or provider of electron pairs. There is no exchange of electron pairs, right? A bond is formed because one substance has a pair of electrons and the other one takes advantage of that pair of electrons with an empty orbital to make a covalent bond. So we don't have an exchange of a pair of electrons, but we have a, something that is dividing the electron pairs to make the bond and something else that is then taking advantage of that electron pair to make that bond. Yeah? Okay. All righty. Good. So then we focus on bronsted lowry acid base theory, which is what we'll spend most of our time talking about. We'll talk a little more about Lewis acid base theory before we're done. Bronsted Lowry acid base theory is all about hydrogen ion transfer, also called proton transfer, right? And you're okay with the proton term, right? 
It's the only time we would expect in a chemical reaction to be talking about protons moving. Because we don't imagine the protons in the nucleus of an atom doing anything during a chemical reaction, right? But they do call hydrogen ion transfer proton transfer simply because that hydrogen ion is just a proton. Isn't it? Okay. No, Bronze is out. Okay. Then we talked about the idea that in Bronsted Lowry acid base theory, acids are merely bases that have a hydrogen ion attached to them. And therefore, the strength of an acid, how good it is as an acid, depends upon the strength of the base, right? A good acid, Bronsted Lowry acid, is one that. But the definition of a strong acid is one that gives up its hydrogen ion easily. If we imagine the acid as a base that has a hydrogen ion attached, then that base must not hang on to the hydrogen ion very tightly. Since our definition of a base is how hard that substance grabs a hold of hydrogen ions, a weak, a strong acid would have at its core a weak conjugate base. And of course the same would be, the opposite would be true as well. Uh, if you had a strong conjugate base and attached a hydrogen to it, it would make a weak acid, right? And you're okay with that whole thing? Okay, so the next question becomes, how do we tell whether a base is strong or weak? You're not going to be expected to look at the formula for a base and be able to tell whether it's strong or weak without using this table. Let's see it real fast. First of all, the back of this table, it says standard reduction potentials for half reactions. That's for chapter 19. I'm just saving a little paper here, right? Okay, so we look on the front, and here we have a list of acids in the first column, and they are listed in order of strength. So according to this table, what is the strongest acid? Perchloric acid. And what is the weakest? Ammonia. Okay, the ammonia molecule NH3. Okay, so that explains the first two columns. The middle column is the reaction. It's really kind of half a reaction. It is showing the acid giving up a hydrogen ion. But this is not what happens when we dissolve them in the water, is it? Okay, in other words, perchloric acid HClO4, when it gives up a hydrogen ion, it loses the hydrogen ion and becomes ClO4 minus. What do we call that? The conjugate base. Huh? The conjugate base of this, yes, it's a base. It's the conjugate base.